first problem in our problem set is calculate the minimum optim optical density needed to protect a worker from direct beam exposure, it means right on into his eye, to 10.6 micron wavelength CO2 laser for 30,000 seconds operating at 1100 watts per square centimeter. So the first thing we want to look at is uh, this particular laser, we're going to look that up in the ANSI uh, maximum uh, uh, protective exposure chart, maximum permissible exposure chart to see uh, what level he can be exposed to for 30,000 seconds uh, at, at this uh, uh, level of power. And then we're going to go ahead and actually calculate uh, what the uh, optical density of the lens that we would need to protect that worker would be. So for starters, it's a CO2 uh, laser, 10.6 micron wavelength CO2 laser. Here we have it here, and we have exposure times, maximum exposure times for 10 seconds, for uh, 600 seconds, um, and for 30,000 seconds. Obviously, 30,000 seconds is emulating like a full day's exposure. Actually, let's give that a try. Let's just for the hell of it, take a look and see what that is. So if we have 60 seconds a minute, times 60 minutes an hour, times eight hours a day, uh, 28,000, so that's pretty good, it's 30,000. So you, that's clearly what's implied here, a, a workday exposure. Uh, I guess maybe they, they don't take lunch hour or something like that, or they work an extra half hour, but 30,000 seconds is approximately an eight hour exposure. Okay, so let's get rid of that. So how do we calculate optical density? Well, we have a formula for it in our uh, PowerPoints. Optical density is equal to the log of the initial beam intensity over the final, final beam intensity. In other words, this is the ratio of it, the log ratios of the two intensities, what, what we start with and what we end up with. So we're gonna actually calculate that. And um, uh, the, the units, by the way, that, that uh, smaller chart was from a larger chart of ANSI laser standards for maximum visible exposure and um, uh, you'll see that the various wavelengths, various different types of lasers and so on and so forth. So both of these charts, I think, are in the PowerPoints if you need to go back and take a look at them. So let's go ahead and work this problem out. And actually, uh, and let me just check the units on here also. Remember, units is always an issue here. So uh, our units are in terms of watts per square centimeter. And the maximum permissible exposure is in watts per square centimeter. So we're sticking with the same units here. So I don't think we'll have any problems there. So at this point, it'd be a good time to pause, give the problem a try on your own. And uh, if you have any issues with it, you can always come back and resume. So let's give this a try. I'm gonna try and see if I can uh, manage to solve this myself. So the optical density is equal to the logarithm of the initial intensity over the uh, final intensity. Okay, so let's see. Our initial intensity equals a log of our initial intensity is 1100 watts per centimeter squared. And our final intensity, uh, now we have to be below what was on our ANSI chart, right? With what our maximum exposure limit would be on the ANSI chart. And that was for our purposes 100 times 10 to the minus three, in other words, 0.1 watts per square centimeters. Okay, so this is going to be 0 0.1 watts per square centimeter. Same thing as 100 times 10 to the minus third per square centimeters. Units cancel out, so optical density is obviously unitless. So now we just have to calculate this. So this is 1 into this is going to be uh, uh, 0.1 is going to move the decimal place over. That's going to become 11,000. And uh, the logarithm of 11,000 is going to be, uh, okay, let's see, it's gonna be four plus the log of 1.1. Uh, okay, we'll look up the log of 1.1, or we can actually just actually do the, we can do the calculation right here. Uh, log 1.1. One. Log is 0.04, we would add that to four. Okay, or we can just use the calculator the other way and clear this out. Just put in a number, 11,000, and find the log to the base 10 
and it's 4.04. So both ways we wind up with the same answer. So the optical density of this lens has to be at least above 4.04. Okay, so in this problem, problem number two, we have two nurses who were accidentally exposed to ultraviolet radiation during preparation of drugs in the hospital pharmacy. Exposure to UBC germicidal lamp occurred over the course of an hour. And uh, we want to see if they've been overexposed past their uh, 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 permissible exposure limit or their maximum exposure limit. The UV bulb had a power density of 0.414 watts per square centimeters. Again, keep an eye on the units here. And it operated a wavelength of 254 nanometers. Okay, so now I want to calculate the maximum exposure time that they can be exposed to uh, uh, at that wavelength and at that power density. And we want to, we want to answer it in seconds. Okay, so um, we have a chart from uh, our tables in uh, the PowerPoint. And in that chart, I'll make, see if I can make it a little bit bigger, easier to see. In that chart, uh, wavelength of 254 nanometers, um, the, ex, the uh, recommended exposure limit is six and the units are millijoules per centimeter squared. So now we got we got a units issue, right? Centimeters and we got joules, right? So it's a little bit different than what we have. So we want to know here's our exposure limit um, and here is uh, here's our exposure limit and here is what we've actually been exposed to. So we're gonna divide the actual exposure and the exposure limit over the actual exposure to see how many seconds that a person can be exposed to uh, before they exceed this limit. Okay, so, and no formula involved, we're just gonna do the division to divide the, uh, the actual exposure, the, the uh, uh, power density into uh, the exposure and see how many seconds we can expose them. So now's a great time to pause and give this a try on your own. And uh, if you're struggling with it, you can come back and, uh, we can take a look at a solution. So I'm going to move this aside and pause, and I'll continue. Okay, so, uh, so let's give this a try now. So let's see what we have here. We have, I'm going to rewrite these, this, this limit. Okay, let's see. We have uh, da, 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 six, oops, six. Uh, 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 millijoules per centimeter squared over our power density, which is let's see, which is where did I put it there? Let's see, 0. 0.414 watts per meter squared. Okay, so few issues here. Number one, watts is joules per second. So I can rewrite this as six millijoules per centimeter squared over 0.44, four, excuse me, 414, 414 uh, joules per second uh, per centimeter squared, per meter squared. Okay, it's tough to keep, keep track of all these units, right? Okay, so joule seconds are just, just the same thing as, as the same thing as watts, but it puts us into at least the same uh, units. And what's going to happen is joules going to cancel out. Our error units are going to cancel out. I'm going to be uh, down on the bottom here. This is this over this, so they'll come up to the top and become just seconds. Okay, when we uh, work out the uh, units. So now we have to uh, convert for our centimeter squared and our meter squared. So six millijoules per square centimeter. Okay, so now let's uh, let's convert. From centimeters into square meters. Okay, now just uh, just uh, in case we have any issue with this at all. Okay, here is a square meter, one meter squared, one meter on each side. So a meter on each side. Uh, there's a hundred centimeters, one hundred centimeters on each side of a of a square that consists of one meter. That centimeter, hundredth of a meter, right? So the area of this is ten thousand centimeters. Okay. So, so uh, 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 to convert centimeter squared into the power density equivalent to meter squared, we're going to multiply by 10,000. This is the amount of power density in just one centimeter 
uh, one square centimeter. We want it to match the meter uh, energy in a square centimeter down here. We're going to multiply this by uh, uh, 10,000. So now we're going to have 6,000, six, excuse me, uh, 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 60,000 joules. Oh, I'm, I'm going to change this now. It was millijoules. So I'm going to go back three places to change millijoules into joules. So it's 60 joules per meter squared over 0.414 joule sec per seconds per meter squared. And joules, 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 meters. The only things that be left is per centimeter down here. Bring it up to the top, it on seconds. And let's get our calculator out. And we got 60 divided by 0.414, and that's equal to about 145 seconds, 144.9 seconds. And we pretty much crispied these notes as apparently, 144.9 seconds. Okay, hopefully we got the same answer. I got the same answer as you did. So problem three asks us, your neighbor is worried about exposure to radiation from high tension power lines. Never do work for your neighbor, number one. Okay. That's only do work for customers. You perform an exposure assessment in your home to determine a magnetic field exposure to be one micro Tesla. Calculate a reasonable threshold limit value for this exposure, basing it on the occupational TLV. Okay, well, they gave you a little bit of hint that uh, the issue here is, is that that TLV is based on an eight hour time weighted exposure. And here we have somebody that may potentially be living in this exposure all the time. Also, it may not be a healthy worker, maybe children and so on and so forth uh, in the household. So we wanna work with the most conservative uh, possible start for this exposure. We wanna adjust for the amount of time. So one conceivable way that we might consider this just to see if we're even close now nobody's saying that this is a good way to do this or that this is appropriate but we don't have you know in the in, in the absence of other possible uh, uh, exposure limits that we might be able to work with at least maybe we can get an idea of how close we are to an adjusted TLV in this situation okay so here's uh, from our powerpoints again uh, here are exposure limits to power frequency fields and for 60 hertz fields, presumably power lines, right? Uh, we look and we see that for magnetic fields, again, our measurement is the micro Teslas for, uh, 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 the, this is in milli Teslas, magnetic fields in milli Teslas. Okay, so in this case, we're looking at this now, and we see that the most conservative, uh, uh, the most sensitive uh, area seems to be head and torso, and the most conservative uh, the TLV is one milli Tesla, okay, for a uh, the uh, intensity of the magnetic field, right? So it's one milli Tesla, and we are exposing to one micro Tesla, and that's over an eight-hour workplace exposure. So at this stage, you could uh, making adjustments for milli Teslas versus micro Teslas, and adjusting for uh, a 40 hour work week, eight, uh, eight hours a day for uh, eight hours a day for five days, you can adjust the exposure down for a 24 seven uh, week with someone living in a home. So I, I, I suggest maybe you can pause here and given this information, complete the uh, solution to the problem. And uh, if you struggle with it, you can come back here and we can continue with the solution. Okay, so let's, let's see how we would approach this. So we have uh, one, mic one micro Tesla is our uh, threshold limit value that's over a, um, a 40 hour work. Let's, let's, let's see what, what, how we would need to convert that exposure into the equivalent exposure over an entire week. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so work week is 40 hours. Okay, however, seven days, 24 hours per day, okay, is going to be equal to, so 
seven times 24 is equal to 168 hours. So instead of a 40 hour work week, we have 128 hour exposure. And again, let's see what that fraction comes out to be. And now I'm gonna take that fraction, actually I'm gonna take that fraction and multiply it by 40 divided by 168 is gonna be 0 0.23, 0 0.238, 0.238. And I am going to take out, that now is gonna make our TLV, it's gonna make our TLV is going to be equal to one micro tesla, one what should be one millitesla times uh, uh, one millitesla times 0.238. So one millitesla times 0.238 is of course 0.238 milliteslas, and that's the equivalent of 238 microteslas. Okay, and her actual exposure was only one micro Tesla. So we are likely to be far, far, far below what the occupational exposure would be adjusted for a 168 hour work week instead of a 40 hour work week. So we're probably in pretty good shape. Although again, you could question the ethics of you know, using, applying this to a, uh, a, a general population, but that's our answer.